What's up everyone, it's Dan with Main Deck, and today I am bringing you some altered TCG gameplay using the Exalted fan-made platform. I'm going to start by answering two questions right away that I know I'm going to get asked. Number one, this is called Exalted. It is a fan-made platform and the link to download it and play yourself is in the description. It is totally free. And number two, if you don't know how to play Altered yet, we have a little video also linked in the description called The Ultimate How to Play Altered TCG. You can learn everything you need to know to follow along there. This video is going to be focused more on the strategy and decision making and the deck we're going to be playing today. So let's jump right in and start playing some Altered. All right, everyone, let's take a look real quick before we start playing at the deck we're going to be playing today. We're going to do a few matches using this kind of interesting Bravos deck I built. It's a little bit of an off the, I don't know if you can call it a meta right now with the small number of cards we have, but an off meta take, I guess, on Bravos, where it's focusing a little bit more on playing certain control elements. Our goal is to use our Kojo and Buddha hero to be able to get this companion into play every other turn and then focus on being able to play control and keep the opponent off the board so that we don't have to actually put a lot of power onto the board. We can just have that kind of Buddha holding us down as we just control what the opponent is playing in the companion expedition. We do want to be able to play some power sometimes though, so the rares we're using in this deck are a rare atlas. Uh, we're using Rare Atlas just because it, for the amount of mana we spend, we get a lot of power. Uh, we are using Rare Tracer. Once again, you spend a low amount of mana and get a high amount of power. This is particularly very good when we are, you know, trying to save our mana to play other control cards. We're playing the Faction Shifted out of Faction Dorothy Gale to have a control effect to bounce characters to reserve and then get a, a you know, a unit on board, get some stats on the board. Out of Faction Foundry Armorer because this will create uh, a Brass Bug token in Target Expedition, letting us play a little bit of a control game where we can kind of push the opponent out of one expedition to the other and then push the brass, brass Bug in there and possibly take two, uh, two sides with the Foundry Armor and the Brass Bug. Uh, and then we are playing a Ortis, an Ortis Spy as well, as a rare, uh, giving us an additional sabotage effect, helping us control the board. Um, and also creates multiple bodies, so it's a small mana expenditure for a lot of value. We're also playing a few other cards. We're playing Bravos Pathfinder, mostly because our amount of card choice is pretty low in the current version of Exalted, uh, but she's a solid two drop with some decent stats. Haven Bouncer to get that sabotage um, really nice, and uh, when it comes in from reserve, it's a bit stronger as well. Haven Trainee is a cheap thing to play that sometimes can be a pretty strong play out of reserve. Intimidation is there. Now, I, I thought a lot about playing the rare version of this, but I decided a lot of the time I was going to have other ways like possibly Dorothy Gale to deal with higher cost things. So I was okay using a rare slot on something else and keeping the common version of Intimidation, but I had to play this for our control build. Isun Boshi is a low, low, low cost for a two water stat, which is sometimes really useful. Um, and then just having that uh, reserve effect, the support ability to be able to give a boost to something can let us put a, an Atlas thing, an Atlas in that's a lot stronger and then that season gets to take place as well. It's pretty nice. Again, low cost expenditure for high power so that we can spend as much mana as we can on control effects instead. And then physical training, um, again, it works really nicely, combos well with Atlas or can be used just to strategically power us up in certain sides when we need to. So that is our Bravos control deck. Let's jump in and start playing a few games and just see how this shakes out. Alrighty, we have our first opponent. We are playing an Izmir player here. Okay, that should be kind of fun. We're going to play our control into their control. Let's uh, let's think about our first turn play. Is we don't think we're going to need Dorothy. Um, we're probably going to play Foundry Armor or Trainee. I think we can do Pathfinder, and uh, let's let's do the Tracer as well. I really want to be able to get Reserve active. So they after you us, and we are gonna, just going to go ahead and we're going to drop a Foundry Armor down in the Hero Expedition. I think this will be, you know, it doesn't really matter either one. They they, they might be able to beat us. Izmir sometimes has weaker... Yeah, okay, they're doing Kadigger and Mage Dancer. Sure, sure, they're doing Mage Dancer shenanigans. We're just gonna pass, that's fine. I think we're just gonna each take a side this turn. Which works for me. And now our armor is ready to make Brass Bugs, which is really nice. Uh, drew two cards, I don't want two trainees necessarily. 
So we are going to be the starting player this time, which means we're going to get our companion over here, which is quite nice. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take advantage of our control aspects now. Uh, I'm going to play the Haven Bouncer. I'm going to attempt to get both sides because it's Izmir. I think I can. And we're going to go ahead and sabotage that Mage Dancer. I know we're not using our mana as efficiently as maybe we could um, necessarily, but I think it's the best play just to get rid of that Mage Dancer right now and, and deny our opponent the extra cards. They are going to sabotage as well, which makes sense. Uh, we're just going to pass. And we'll see if they can compete on... Okay, so they do beat us. Water was the only one we cared about, unfortunately, so they, they tie us over there, but we still get an advancement on that side. Draw two cards. We're going to go to five. One, two, three. Um, it might be... Uh, yeah, I don't think I need the Pathfinder again. I think that's okay. We have the Bouncer into Trainee into Bo Boshi, which is a pretty solid turn to push a lot of power out there. Even if we don't have our Companion this turn. Do a Baba Yaga to draw a card. Nice. We have to win on Water over here. Um, and we have Boshi to be able to guarantee that we do. So let's start... Actually, let's just start with the Boshi and save our... Save our mana. We're going to push this Boshi over here and we'll, we'll add some more to that if we need to. They're going to after you. Make sense? Um... I think this is fine. We'll do the trainee over here. Because we can trace her on this side as well. And then next turn our... Uh, I maybe, maybe I should have gone for the bouncer play this turn, actually. But I like staying flexible like this. We're able to take both sides because we didn't do just two things here. Three. Or we can deny them entirely. Three... I would like to get out of this water square. Sure. We'll deny it. We'll deny it totally for them. If we had just played the bouncer here and then played over here, they would have actually denied us the progression as well. So I kind of like this. They're pretty stuck now. And I don't think they're, they're not going to be progressing at all. We're going to get out of water. We're going to get to... Forest and Mountain, which we're going to be a lot happier in. Oh, they put me to sleep. I totally missed they beauty sleeped. Oh, okay, okay. That happened so fast. Whoops. All right, all right. They beauty sleep so that they can progress there. But now we have the Bravos Tracer in play. Um, We are going to get rid of... I think we're going to get rid of the Boshi. That's fine now. All right, I don't... Oh, I wish I had the Boshi. Shoot. Uh, Dorothy Gale's going to be pretty sweet, but maybe not quite yet. Still, I'm going to hold on to it. I think I want the Dorothy Gale at this stage of the game. We're going to get the Companion over here, and we have the Bravos Tracer in play. They can spend another turn to Beauty Sleep it if they want to. Um... Yeah, I do. I did run out of kind of efficient uses of my mana now, unfortunately. But we can, I mean, if we play this Haven Trainee over here, that's not actually as good as the Bouncer. We're going to play the Bouncer over here. Because we're on Mountain. That's going to make it pretty tough for the opponent to beat us. And then they'll discard that. Okay, that's fine. We're actually going to pass right now. They can Beauty Sleep the Tracer again if they want to take that side, but Beauty Sleep's not very good against us with our Buddha side. I'm wishing I had more of my Sabotage effects now. I haven't been able to see them. Yep, there's a Beauty Sleep on the Tracer. Makes sense. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Intimidation and Dorothy is going to be a pretty strong turn, but they're going to 
Oh, it's not going to be that good because they're going to make us go first. Oh, the after you is so annoying here. I guess we're just going to put the Intimidation down because we have to play Sun Wukong or we won't be able to do anything. This is kind of a weak turn, unfortunately. Baba Yaga to draw, okay. I'm down with that. In that case, since this has fleeting, we'll actually be able to get rid of it entirely. So yeah, we're gonna play the Dorothy now. Nice. After me. After you. They still have to put up stats, is the thing. And Izmir's not incredible at putting up stats, but the problem is they are now at Sakara Brew mana. They didn't do it this turn, but we do have to be aware that Sakara Brew is going to start pushing us backwards. We didn't get off to a fast start. Not that this Bravos deck is spectacular at getting off to a fast start anyway. And honestly, I I want to have seen more of the sabotage effects. We we're probably gonna stop putting mana in pretty soon here. Lady of the Lake and pass. We get a double push there, which is really nice. Really nice. Oh, there we go. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I kinda wanna be able to play three things, so I might put one more mana in. So I think that'll be pretty clutch here. Okay, what are we fighting over? Mountain and forest and mountain and water on that side. We have Buddha here too. Oh man, that's so good. It's just a tooth fairy and a lady, huh? Okay. Um, we will attempt to go for the win. We're going to push the Order Spy on this side and we're going to sabotage the Lady of the Lake. They have to work with what they have. We have a physical training. We can actually physical training twice, which is stronger than playing Dorothy. But it does make us weaker to another beauty sleep. But we... Oh, man. If they have that, that's going to be pretty good. If they're pushing onto this side, I'm going to not feel bad about physical training Buddha. Izmir is going to punish us for the physical training, though. I just know it. But that's okay. That's why we have the Dorothy available also. There's the beauty sleep. They're going to beauty sleep on that side. They can beauty sleep on both. That's probably their plan is double beauty sleep. So we're going to go ahead and put Dorothy on this side. Ooh! Wow. I feel like I got baited into that, actually. <laughs> Damn, nice. All right. All right. Good for them. Okay, Atlas. Atlas getting beauty sleep doesn't sound very fun to me. Uh, I don't... I think I need to put anything in. Oh, I hate them having these beauty sleeps, though. I want to put Atlas out, but it's just going to get beauty sleeped. Beauty slept. They're going to spy craft that. Can I bait them into playing their beauty sleep? No, they'll spycraft. I think they'll just spycraft again. Um, I'm gonna try though. I'm gonna see if they'll they'll go for the beauty sleep early. I'm gonna try to physical training the Ordis spy, and maybe they'll think it's just such a good target. Maybe. Come on, go ahead and beauty sleep it for me. Because if we can safely drop Atlas, we're in a good position. No, they after you'd. Of course they after you'd. Uh Alright. Fine, you got me. Here's Atlas. 
So, it, forcing them to beauty sleep Atlas, though, still means we can progress on this side. Okay, so they did Spycraft again, and then they beauty sleep, which is about expected. The advantage of Izmir, right? Getting to go so late, get, getting to force me to play out all of my things. But if they beauty sleep the Atlas, they still have to deal with it next turn. And the Orta Spy gets to come down again as well. And we're going to have our companion out. Oh, I'm sorry. They're waiting on me to pass. <laughs> I, uh, I'm very bad about that. Yeah, they, oh, they banishing gated, right? They got that up for resupply. We still get to push, though. That's all right. Okay, we don't need to put anything else down now. We're doing pretty good. We have Buddha. We are going to drop a Sun Wukong over here. We're just going to try and overwhelm them. They need to draw Kraken's Wrath again. If they got Kraken's Wrath again, then we're... Then they, then they probably got us this turn. But we only have to win on one side now. Let's see. We push the Al the Alice to hand. Um, what makes more sense here? I'm gonna put this on this side because again, I only have to win on one. Spy's very good against them because they just they can't deal with that many things. It's not me waiting to pass this time. I I. Played my thing, I'm fine. One card in hand and a beauty sleep. So... Even if they had Kraken's Wrath, they couldn't get rid of everything here. Oh, they just pass? Alright. Well, if they're just calling it, then that's fine. There we go. Good game, Izmir opponent. We did get there. We did get there, even though they were doing a lot of control against us. Alrighty, Axiom this time. Axiom, Axiom, nice. That should be interesting. I don't know if I have a lot of ways to deal with permanence, so we'll see. Um, what's my first turn like again? It might be Bravos Pathfinder into Ratatoskr, actually. Yeah, we'll put these three in. We'll keep the Intimidation, because I like it. It's a good card. And we'll see if we can take both sides. We'll see what the opponent does. Because if they put a Brass Bug, if their turn is just playing a landmark into a Brass Bug, that's actually where Bravos Pathfinder is quite strong and can uh, still get an advancement on that side. Okay. That's good. That's a really good play. Foundry Armor Rare. That's strong. Um... Okay, well, we'll take Pathfinder on one side. And I think we'll just get the Ratatoskr down anyway. So we can unlock its stronger side, perhaps? I think that's fine. We just want to be able to play with the boosts. Okay, we're gonna have four mana. We're probably gonna go Haven Trainee Pathfinder this turn. We could go a double Pathfinder. We're, we're in Forest though, I want the Trainee. I'm gonna do Trainee on the hero side and Pathfinder on the companion. We're gonna have our companion here as well. Um, sure. I figured if I put the Pathfinder on the Companion side, that was going to push them to go to the Hero side anyway. And I just kind of want them to stay away from me. Okay, and then that's fine. Then our, our Pathfinder can come over here and make some progress. And then this turn, we'll get the Trainee. Yeah, that's fine. That works for me. We'll get the trainee into our reserve so that we'll have a really strong play. 
when we want it. Um, ooh, I really like I really like my sabotage in this matchup. Might be like Orta Spy into Intimidation this turn. Yeah, Sun Wukong's out of here. Orta spying this foundry armor is going to be very, very good. Unless they play it first. I hope they don't. I want to sabotage this so badly. I do not want to deal with this. Three cost for 2-2-2 two, two, two on each side. That's too much. It's an even match so far, though. We both progressed the same amount. We really need to turn it to our side here. Okay, they got forest power there. We might be able to intimidate them out of there. Let's go Orta Spy and knock this out. I'm pretty sure they were planning on playing that next. Five, five, three. Holy cow. Huh. Well, I might let them progress on that side. Because I wouldn't mind drawing another card. I think I'm just going to intimidate this. And then they can give me another card again if they want to. On a future turn, I'm okay with that. Look at this evenly matched game. Look at this. We have to discard one now. Uh, we're going to go to six. I guess I just kind of wasted that Ratatoskr ultimately. Unfortunately. Um, ooh, that one for two, though, actually might be kind of nice. I just don't need the Sun Wukong right now. Oh, maybe I should have done Ratatoskr, actually. I kind of regret that. <coughs> We do have the Companion this turn, which is quite nice. They match us by spending one. Okay. So Frog Prince and Salvager available. The Trainee, not too exciting given where we're standing right now. I guess I didn't think about that too much because I really want him where we have Forest. Um... Yeah, you know, we can just, like, we can just test the water a little bit. Let's just put a Ratatoskr out. I like these cheap plays that you can just use to push the play back to your opponent, so you can play around wherever they are going to decide to play. Okay, so 2-4-2 two, two there, and that's most of their mana. Okay, we have to win on water, which is easy to do on that side. Yeah. We have to win on water here, too. So it doesn't really matter which side we play these two. But they still have one left also. I guess let's... Let's put the Bushi down here. Because this is pure water, so that it's going to totally lock them out. Unless they have a one-cost thing left in their hand right now, which... I don't think they do. And if it is, it's probably a 1-1-1. One, one, one. And if it is, then we still win. Then our Haven Trainee can come down over here. Wasn't this supposed to sabotage? Was that in their reserve or something? Or did they forget to sabotage? I feel like that is a missed opportunity, if so. So there we go. That was our huge turn that we were looking for. Okay, uh, we're going to get rid of the Boshi now. We have a pretty strong reserve. Ratatoskr's okay. And we have a Foundry Armor, who isn't great for us. One, two, three, four, five. But, I mean, it's, it's raw stats. We'll put the Boshi down into mana, and then we can play out everything. We just have to win on one side. I haven't seen any Keylon surges from them yet. It seems like they're not playing a lot of removal. 
we can certainly put a lot of effects onto one side and just guarantee it. Uh, probably on the left side, because everything has even stats, and that'll give us a chance to win on two different, uh, two different biomes. Um, except they're fighting with Frog Prince over there. Oh, they have a 2-4-2 to play also. If they just play the 2-4-2... 1-2-3-4-5-6-7-8-9-10... Yeah, they, they still can't beat us, so... I think this is fine. I'm gonna play the artist. I, we're gonna fight on the frog, that's fine. We'll fight the frog. It's just that they'll have six power here. I don't really know what else they could do, but... See, the tough thing is with Axiom, you really want to take advantage of Sierra and Oddball. Basically, they only, their hero only did something one turn this game. Whereas our hero was active for like three or four turns. Three, three turns. I think. And we'll just lock her down. There it is. Another win for Bravos. Congratulations, Bravos. Good game, Axiom opponent. Alright, we have one more game, and it is Bravos versus Bravos, which is exciting to see. I like uh, I like to see what our different decks are gonna be capable of. Uh, as usual, I think Dorothy Gale isn't something I want to hold on to at this stage of the game. Um I like Foundry Armor into Boshi early quite a bit, actually. Let's Ooh. This is fine. We'll do intimidation and physical training. We just don't need those too much right now. They're probably... We're probably just going to let them... Hmm, wait. Ooh, hang on a second. Okay. We're going to play the Boshi on this side. To try and advance with them. We'll take water, they'll take forest. See if they have their own Boshi or something. And then we can play the Foundry Armor on this side just to block Buddha. Which I think is... A good call. Yeah, we'll block there. We're gonna go first, and we're gonna have access to our Order Spy right away. Uh, easy choice. It's gonna be our Buddha this time. Hello, Buddha. And we'll play our Ortis Spy over here and knock that trainee out of there. I think we'll have the advantage in this matchup, because I think we'll have some pretty good control over their available cards. Um, We're still winning on two of those. What are they going to play over here? I'm gonna try- I guess I'm gonna try this over here. I'm not sure what was correct. I'm not sure if I should have played it on this side or that side. But this gives them a lot more to overcome and they've already committed to this side, so I feel like in the worst case scenario I can- they divert over here and then this Boshi didn't really do anything. Okay, then they got a Haven Warrior then. Alright, fair enough. My Boshi didn't do anything no matter where it went. So, two advancements to two right now. Um, five mana. Kind of just want to play both of these this turn. So, we'll probably drop the Ratatosker. These cards, like, Rare Bravo's Tracer is really clutch, so I kind of want to hold on to that. For a turn of the game. Where it's really useful, he's going to use the Boshi and what, drop a huge Haven Warrior, probably? We'll see what they play. It could be Atlas, actually. A big Atlas would be pretty scary. Yep, big Haven Warrior. That makes sense. Um, Foundry Armor actually can beat it on not a stat that we care about, unfortunately. Let's see. Let's do the Spy over here, which beats out Buddha. Buddha. 
and they are going to training the Buddha. Nice. I could keep the foundry armor for next turn. It's not like I need it to win necessarily. If I play the trainee, I still progress, but they still progress. And then the trainee will go down here and become available. Next turn could be trainee and tracer. It's kind of risky. Like, blocking them is probably good too. But I'm going to try and set up for a future turn. I'm going to try and take forest here still. Move them in a mountain where they're maybe going to be a little easier to block off, although Tracer is not good at blocking mountain. Neither is the trainee, so they're not going to actually be easy to block off there at all. But we should be able to block them totally on forest, and we'll still have a companion on this side. So unfortunately, two movements for them and only one for us that turn. But, ooh, we got a Dorothy Gale now. Nice. Yeah, we'll drop the Sun Wukong. Dorothy Gale next turn might be quite good. We're on the play this turn, though, so we kind of need to... We're just going to go ahead and do our trainee. Our 5 through 3 on the forest side. And our Tracer can come down and be just a lot of stats. They, uh, they sabotaged. Ah, uh, it's too bad. With only three left, all they can really do is they'll physical training this to go to fives. And they'll still lose to Bravo's Tracer on this side. So that looks pretty good to us. I don't think this card can get them out of it unless they had their own Bravo's Tracer. Then they could tie us. That'd be a rare one, too. Rare Tracer. Sun Wukong. Oh, no! They beat us on Mountain with Sun Wukong! Oh, no! Okay. Alright. Alright. Sounds good. Sounds good. Advancement on both sides. Look at this. Such a tight game! Oh, man. Uh, we do have Dorothy Gale going into the next turn. I wish we still had that Axiom. That Foundry Armor. But we don't. Hoping to draw a 2-drop. I'd love to play the 2-drop with the Dorothy Gale. They have to pitch one of their cards here, at least. They're out of a hand entirely. We got Intimidation. And... We are... Not on the play. <laughs> That's not great, actually. Uh, that means... Well, I guess I could have kept the Intimidation and just done Double Bounce. Maybe this is wrong. They have a Tracer. I'm going to try to get them to commit onto this side, expecting that I'm going to be playing more. I imagine they'll do something like play Sun Wukong on this side to lock it down, assuming that the Tracer is totally locked. But the Tracer is fleeting, so my goal is actually to Dorothy Gale it. Get rid of it entirely. And then sweep on that side. They're gonna do training on that side. Okay, I think we're still okay. 3-2-2, two, two, yeah. I mean, I could have done the Buddha as well. It didn't matter really which side. We're just one away now. This Haven Bouncer might be clutch. I can only play two of these either way. No matter what. So I think I just keep the Sun Wukong for options. And it's nice being Bravos going into this tight game and having the turn where we get Buddha in play. Being on the play to have Buddha is pretty strong right now. Our first play to. Haven Bouncer, get rid of Sun Wukong, and hopefully just eliminate their options. We need to win on both sides to win. It's the unfortunate thing. We'll try to. Is if we each take one side, then we tie. <laughs> Which isn't... Is then we gotta go to sudden death. 
So we do have a 333 or a 3 or a 242. And that 242 might be clutch for stealing this side. Oh, it's a uh, Shenlong. <laughs> okay, well, Shenlong's pretty good. Never mind, we're not stealing that side. Um Yeah, cool. Uh I mean, I'm just going to end up discarding this anyway. Okay, we'll go to Tai, and then they'll have Shenlong, and they'll be on the play. So that, that doesn't look good for us. Yeah, you got it. Okay, tiebreaker. We did not draw a sabotage card as much as we wanted to, although I don't think it would matter. I think they're going to drop Shenlong right away. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Foundry armor. I don't think I don't see how we could possibly win here, though. This is crazy. <laughs> we're we're in we're in danger right now. <laughs> Shenlong's so good. Its stats are so huge. Maybe they'll forget to play it. Maybe. <laughs> They didn't forget to play it. Uh, so good going to the tiebreaker having Buddha too, and they have the Bush, the Boshi as well. My God, that's pretty good. All right, I did what I could, but you got me. Congratulations, Bravo's opponent. All right. Well, everyone, those are three games using Bravos. Two wins, one loss, which, uh, you know, is still a pretty good showing and uh, showed the power of some different cards in Bravos. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. We'll continue to do some more of these videos probably throughout the Kickstarter campaign for Altered and Beyond just because it's quite fun to play these games. And uh, it's fun just to show off the different styles of gameplay that you might see in the game. Here you got to see two totally different Bravos decks with a lot of different choices playing against each other, and uh, and it really could have been anybody's game. So, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.